Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. I'm here today for Poppy Stamps and I wanted to show you three of my favorite ways to use Distress Oxide inks in card making. So the first way is to do ink blending. My favorite paper to use for this is Strathmore Bristol Smooth, which has a really smooth surface, makes it really great for ink blending. If you have trouble with ink blending, I would recommend both this paper and the Distress Oxide inks. You can use other inks, you can use other papers. I find this to be the easiest combination to achieve really great blending and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean here. So I have my ink blending tools and I'm doing a really rough job on the first color here. I have abandoned coral. I've laid it down really quickly. You can see there's lots of openings of white spots. I do that on purpose because I want some areas to be lighter than others, some to have more pink, some to have more orange, and the best way to do that is to leave some open areas where then you can fill in with these different colors. So now I'm coming in with squeezed lemonade, which gives it this really bright pop. I'm going to be cutting out fish with this and they are koi fish and I really like this combination of the abandoned coral, the ripe persimmon, and the squeezed lemonade. I'm also going to use a little bit of the squeezed of the spiced marmalade as well just to have lots of depth and dimension and just lots of gradient of color. I love the way this looks as a koi fish. I just have a little scrap of paper there that I had die cut into a butterfly and I'm just using that so I don't get fingerprints on that paper because every time I put my hands down, I end up with a big fingerprint. So look at that beautiful background there and we're actually going to die cut this so it's not gonna be the background. The second way to use Distress Oxide inks that I love is to create a watercolor background. So this time I'm using Strathmore watercolor paper. It's way more textured, it is not smooth. I'm going to use the tumbled glass first and just spray that down. And I'm also going to spray the watercolor paper. That's why it's important for this technique to use a true watercolor paper because I am putting a ton of ink and water on this paper and you can see that it is curling a little bit. Don't worry, when we dry it, it will straighten out. But I wanted lots of layers and that's the other great thing about those Distress Oxide inks is you can layer colors on top of each other, especially if you dry them in between steps. Right now, I'm just trying to create that really watery looking background so I'm not concerned about drying it in between I just want those gradients of colors and everything kind of blending together then I'm going to take some of the tumbled glass and I'm gonna just flick it on with the paintbrush to have some water droplets there now I'm drying because now I'm ready to start layering my color a little bit I'm also going to spritz the just plain water with the distress sprayer and then dry it and with the oxide inks you get that oxidation effect where you have the little white droplets showing through because the color kind of lifts off and I think that this looks so much like water in the background and you can see the difference between the watercolor background with the splashes and then the blending that we get on the smooth cardstock. The third way that I like to use these Distress Oxide ink pads is direct to paper. So I wanted my frame, which is the Stitchwork rectangle frames from Poppy Stamps, to be that darker blue. So I'm just taking the ink pad and rubbing it right on top. Now it's time to start cutting out my fish, and I'm going to use that paper that we made with lots of coral and pink and yellow and orange and I'm just going to cut out a number of the fish as many as I can fit on the paper and you can see that you get just a great gradient of colors on one fish which is so unique if you just cut it out of plain cardstock it would just be one color so this is just a really great way to get a lot of interest on your die cuts is to do this ink blending first and then cut them out. Now I have four fish. I did want at least one more of the fish heads and fins, so I just cut out a piece of it because you'll see what we're gonna do here is lay them down on the watercolor background with some tape runner behind them and have them hanging off the edge just to create a pattern of these fish. Then I'm going to flip it over, use some non-stick scissors, and cut off any pieces that are hanging off the edge there. 
I want to continue my pattern a little bit so I have just the head on one area I have just a tail on another area so I can use up some of my bits and pieces I just want to make it look like an organic background pattern so instead of stamping a pattern background I'm using die cuts to create that pattern background and again just flipping it over and then cutting off with the nonstick scissors now I'm going to add that same tape runner behind the frame there and try and lay it down as straight as possible on my four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card and then I'm going to lay my card panel with the fish right inside that frame I have die cut a glitter foam with adhesive back out of the folksy thanks from poppy stamps and I'm just gonna lay that down in the middle of the card I am going to add some glitter and shine with my wink of Stella clear brush then I'm going to lay down some dots of liquid adhesive this is the thermoweb mixed media adhesive and then I'm going to use some Lucy's Cards Pearls on top of those. And the great thing about those Lucy's Cards Pearls is that they come with an assortment of sizes in the one pack, which I really, really like. So you have some uh, larger, medium, and very teeny tiny pearls. I'm going to add a little bit of Nouveau Crystal Glaze on top of the thanks just to add an additional element of dimension and shine and that completes my card. You can see I made another card with the folksy script hello as well. If you're interested in any of the supplies that I use today, they will of course all be linked down below in the YouTube description. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel here or check out my blog for more information and I'll link a couple of videos that you might be interested in. I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Have a wonderful day.